Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, if you are into reverse engineering malware, you must read the DA's diary. It has a pretty simple title, a Maldoc cleaned by antivirus, but really it turns out to be a deep dive into some of the file structures involved with office documents. So the problem here was that a document was recovered that was very likely malicious, but antivirus already modified and essentially uh, removed the malicious part of the document. At least uh, that's sort of what it looked like. The antivirus in question here being Kaspersky and uh, what did he then attempted to do is trying to recover the malicious code, which of course is interesting because you still want to know what this particular piece of malware may have done if it would have been able to run. It may have, for example, run on a different workstation with different antivirus that didn't catch it. And then you may want to know what are some of the indicators of compromise or such that you should be looking for. Now, the deep dive here into the document formats essentially shows how Kaspersky didn't actually overwrite the malicious code. It just truncated the respective stream. And well, uh, by actually modifying the file structures, you're able to recover and analyze that truncated stream. Very interesting analysis. And like I said, really the good part here is it goes into all the little details uh, of these file structures structures and how to manipulate them. And Proofpoint has an interesting write-up about an attack that they have observed against various French entities. And now a couple of interesting things about this. It starts actually fairly normal, not so interesting with a Word document that claims to be a resume and of course tricks you into enabling macros but it then actually installs a chocolate tree that's an open source package manager kind of heavy i think to install it but uh, i guess that also helps with evading detection because that's definitely not a malware and then they use a chocolate tree to install things like uh, python and uh, additional uh, packages now, some of the malware also arrives attached to images. Proofpoint calls it steganography, and I have often seen it called steganography. In my opinion, it's not really steganography if you're just sort of attaching Base64 encoded uh, text to an image and then decode it. Usually steganography more means sort of you modify the image content itself, but so be it, uh, it still helps get past a lot of detection mechanism. They're also uh, using sort of a new way to use schedule tasks in order to bypass some detection. This is uh, certainly a write-up that will help you uh, shore up some of your detection uh, techniques and uh, see if you are able to detect some of the techniques used in uh, this particular attack. And then we got uh, more updates for backup products. In this case, it's now IBM Spectrum Protects turn. The server does allow a remote attacker to bypass security restrictions. Uh, not really a lot of additional details here. What an attacker could possibly do with this. CSS space score is only at 7.5, but something you probably do want to take care of. Then I have two stories that are a little bit more speculative, uh, not what I usually cover, but uh, important enough that I think I should at least mention. Uh, first of all, the Lapses Extortion Group claims to have breached Microsoft. There is some credibility uh, to this claim, given that uh, they have breached companies like Vodafone, Samsung, and uh, Ubisoft, and uh, similar large companies uh, before. They posted screenshots uh, that that appear to be source code from Bing and Cortana. So certainly could evolve into a big deal. Definitely something you want to keep a little bit an eye out for how this will develop. At this point, Microsoft just states that they are investigating. Second, there is a statement by the White House stating that there is evolving intelligence that the Russian government is exploring 
options for potential cyber attacks. And essentially, the statement is sort of asking businesses to get ready for it. Now, there are links in this document to some guidance published by CISA recently. For example, their Harden Your Cyber Defense guidance that talks about things like two-factor authentication and such. My take on this is if this is the first time you have heard about endpoint protection and two-factor authentication, it's probably too late uh, to get started with this. But this is, number one, an opportunity to maybe bring home the point with some senior management that these things are important and are expected from business now to be taken care of. Now, it can also work the other way around where uh, senior management is now uh, seeing uh, things like this on the news. So you probably want to be ready and demonstrate how you're implementing some of these things and basically show that that uh, you have uh, this particular problem more or less under control. Try to avoid some busy work that's sometimes the result of uh, some of these sort of more undirected kind of emergency situations where you don't really know what to prepare for. We definitely have no idea and there's nothing in the document what type of cyber attack to be ready for. Based on some of the recent history, denial of service, uh, wiper attacks and the like are certainly something uh, to uh, be counting on here. And you know, definitely I, I would probably double check that my offline backups are okay and uh, maybe focus on that. That's probably at this point sort of uh, the best thing that you can do. Look a little bit at disaster recovery uh, with uh, denial of service. But remember, directives like this and uh, management pressure can also become a denial of service against your security team. Definitely save your resources until there is some specific actional uh, items that uh, you can really take care of where it really is worth it than throwing some extra manpower on and maybe working some long hours. But you can only do that if you are holding back a little bit now and uh, are rested when uh, things really happen. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.